Right, we're back in. Um, I'm leaving this in as well. Usually I'd edit out any glitches like this, but I'm leaving it in so you can see, you know. At the end of the day, I didn't create Revit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I think the problem might have been because I'm running Cam Studio as well. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, reliable that is. Either way, I'll try it again. So I'll select, um, tab select that. I'll try, try it again here, up to level 1. Click Apply. Yep, it's done it, no problem. It, it could have done that before, I don't know why it didn't, but there you go. We've all learnt something today. Um, that'll happen, graphics card glitches, other programs running. If only we had a stable operating system we could run it on, but there you go. So now we're on... Um, <coughs> I have slightly lost my train of thought with this. We've just done point number 41. Uh, we've changed it to 2500 elevation. We've just selected it... Uh, yeah, that's how all heights are set in Revit. So if you had a two-storey house, you'd select your walls, um, you'd constrain the top constraint to the level two, level three, whatever. You're probably thinking, how on earth do I put more levels in? In an elevation, um, you'd just click your level tool and put them in like that. But that's coming up in future uh, work that we're going to be doing, so don't worry about any of that. Uh, yep. That's, that's how levels are done. You can finish items above and below certain levels. So, for instance, that's constrained, this wall is constrained to uh, level 1. But let's say you wanted it to peak up above level 1 by 100 mil. You just change the top offset to 100. Enter. So what that's done is it's hosted on level 1. Oh, sorry, it's hosted on level 0 up to level 1. But it's just the top of it's controlled... Um, by level 1 and it's got a 100 mil offset similarly we could select that wall and give it a negative offset of say minus 200 and it'll f it'll fall below 200 mil below the level 1 marker so yeah you know, often it's set to zero but that's how you can control local offsets little things like that i'll show you another tool as well i shouldn't really be doing this because it's nothing like what's in the book Just switch to a right thing if you click a wall choose edit profile <clears throat> we can change the actual shape of that wall if I drag that pink line back that one down that kind of thing draw a new pink line in there uh, and green tick that that has actually put a notch in that wall that's useless in this case so I'm just undoing that similarly though I could put um, let's say a circle put a circle here you've got to use solid pink lines there can't be any gaps so that's cut a, a window through there. If you were going to put a window in, you'd use an actual round bullseye window element and it would do it for you. But either way, um, I'll come out of that. That's just a bit of an aside. That's a, a DVD bonus extra. There you go. Um, right then. <clears throat> so we're down. I've just shown you 45, really. Uh, we don't need an offset, so all these should be set at zero. Interestingly, if I were in an elevation and I did move that level, um, your wall had come up with it. That's why you constrain things to levels. It's all about constraints, Revit. It's all about not you're not having to worry about... If you have to edit anything in future, you don't have to worry about updating every little bit. If it's constrained, it'll update automatically. That's one of its strengths. We're going to put a floor in next. Um, just go to level naught plan. Floors are very easy to put in. On your floor tool, there's a couple of options. If you're ever stuck with anything as well in Revit, just hover your mouse over something and it'll do an animated expansion and it'll show you pretty much how it's used or what it does. Just click your floor tool. We're in sketch mode now, which is a bit like more like regular AutoCAD. Um, I'm going to use a line tool and you'd click on the inside face. I'm just going to put um, thin lines on. TL is the uh, shortcut. But even so, I'm just going to go back to this. If you ever lose that your tool set just look for the green the active tab and you're back to normal um, now normally I suggest you do this but just go around the in the uh, I'm panning and that while I'm still in the command you want to do this structural to a structural opening the reason we're going around the doors is so that you've got something to actually stand on in terms of a slab when the doors are uh, open. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I'll just green tick that. that. That's the type of floor 
that's been selected. Po point number 47 says it doesn't want that floor type, it wants that one, so change it to this 160mm concrete. Um, that's fair enough. And then it's green ticket. There you go. Now, if you orbit around, go to a 3D view and orbit around, you'll see there's a floor underneath. We're actually going to do some uh, strip footing underneath this, so some foundation walls and then a concrete uh, foundation underneath that. So these are going to get obliterated anyway, but that's just me showing you, you know, where walls, uh, the versatility of the floor tool for shapes. Uh, so we've done the, that's point number 47. Uh, and also when you put a floor in, the reason everything went vague and faint is because we were in sketch mode. So it's expecting these kind of pink boundary lines. And then when you green tick it, you're back to normal. Oh, if you ever double click something by accident, like a door, um, you end up editing its family, which you don't want to do. So just click that icon there, choose no, because we don't want to save over the original that came with Revit, and then you're back to normal. A lot of people panic when that happens. It looks a bit weird as well, because uh, it's not set to proper perspective yet, but it will be when we put cameras on. Now... A, a way to put floors in, really, if you didn't want to put those little nibs in where they were, um, I'll just show you very quickly. We'd do, in architecture, we'd do floor. Instead of choosing lines, we'd just do rectangle, and I'd click from that corner to that corner. It, that's it. you just green tick it. So I'll uh, discard that one. Pretty quick. Um, so... That's number fifty, number fifty-one. Yeah, I've done that. Number fifty-two. Check your three D view. Shared it if you like by hitting SD. That's fine. A lot of times it's worth working in hidden line mode, HL, because you, you, your computer tends to orbit a bit faster and whatnot, uh, which is all well and good. Oh, incidentally, as well, if you select an object and then orbit, it'll use that object you've selected as a like a pivot point. That's handy sometimes if you don't want things flying off screen. Anyway, uh, so number three, we're on 53 now. We're going to put a roof in. We're going to choose roof by footprint and we're going to do a pitched industrial roof. So we'll go to level one this time. We want the roof on level one. If you did draw it on level naught by accident, that's fine. You can tell it where you want it to go um, afterwards. In fact, to demonstrate that, I'm going to draw it on level uh, naught incorrectly. So I'll draw my roof tool, and it says, do you want to move it to... So it's detected, actually, that it's not the lowest level. Do you want to move it to level 1? In this case, I'll choose yes. So we've now jumped to level 1. I'm going to click a rectangle, and just where it says offset, we're going to put 200 mil in, um, so it... So it overhangs the wall, you know, that's where your gutter would go and all that kind of stuff. Roofs don't finish flash, flush with walls, they, they overhang. So if I click there and click there, you can see that it's put a distance of 200 between it. Just green tick that. Now, if I come into a 3D view, that's plonked a roof on. I'm just going to select this to make sure it's the right roof type. Yeah, pitched, warm, industrial. Is that the one we wanted? I'm looking at... Uh, yeah, number 53, that's right. So we've set it, we've done number 54, that's 200 mil. Um, it says don't click the green tick yet, so I've jumped the gun. So I'm going to get back to where I were by, in level 1, I've got the roof selected. Just choose edit footprint, we're back to normal. And this is this is because we don't want all the sides of the roof to, um, to slope. Uh, so what we'll do is... If you click that top line, it's sloping at 30 degrees. Now, I'm going to show you this in from, from 3D anyway. Each of these roofs, uh, pit, roof edges are sloping up at 30 degrees, whereas we want the two edge, these two to slope up, but these two to be vertically straight up, which is known as a... Uh, there's a gable end and there's a hipped roof. So when they all slope like this, it's hipped, right? But we want it to be a gable. Um, so I'll edit that footprint... I'm going to choose this line here and tell it where it says define slope, untick that so it's not sloped. Click this one, untick that so it's not sloped, and green tick it. Now, yes, you're right, there's a big gap there. 
we're going to correct this by attaching these walls to the roof now you can select a wall choose attach and click the roof and it'll fill that in for you now the annoying thing is it, we haven't done all the walls in one go so I'm going to quickly undo that the quickest method is to hover tab select then attach to top right so that'll do them all in one go so usually if you can chain select in Revit do so because it'll save you four commands for the price of one uh, right then we've just done uh, number 59 so number 60 um, that's just saying if we've only done one end there's a little notch missing um, I've shown you how to correct that just do a chain select which is 61 we're going to add a foundation and then we'll be pretty much done so I switch to an elevation view I'll switch to east again we're going to add a level in and this time it's going to be 600 millimeters below that so that's 2500 above we're going to be 600 below um, so we're going to click our level tool I'm going to move over here so it's in line with that you could start anywhere I'm going to move up a bit so it's 600 and then just drag across and then press escape to come out of our level tool if you've done it wrong you can just click that and change that to minus 600 anyway so you could even edit put it in wrong and just change it after I'm going to change where it says level 2 to TOC in fact it, it says TOC in the handout top of concrete which is the foundation concrete just do TOF if it's clearer to you which is top of foundation would you like to rename the corresponding view is it saying it's called level 2 over here but you're calling it TOF to save confusion I'm going to agree that I'm going to say yes I want that plan view to be called TOF then I know exactly where I am level 2 suggests it's higher up than level 1 which isn't the case so I've done that um, you can click that icon there and it'll split the dimension down uh, sorry the level marker down it's not a dimension so we've got top of foundation level 0 level 1 that's fair enough it might set up a con it will set up a concrete in the printed version of the booklet but uh, you you at least know what's going on now right 